So, we'll go ahead and make a start then. Uh, obviously, Calby will be recording this, providing his equipment is working, which it should be no problem. So, it will all be on YouTube at a later date and time. Right, Intel then, boys and girls, is possibly one of the most important things in EVE Online. I'm sure everybody says that about everything in EVE Online, but Intel wins and loses fights. So... Obviously, Intel stands for intelligence. That's all it is. No fancy acronym involved or anything like that. It is simply intelligence. And it is intelligence on hostile fleets and ships in a particular area or across a region. When you gather Intel, you are just gathering information. You are figuring out what is where, what ships are in space, what's moving around, what people. And you are then reporting that Intel to other people in the Alliance. And there are numerous ways you can do that, which we'll go through in a minute. Intel is, as I said, incredibly important. So if people do not have Intel, they die in this game. It's as simple as that. That is miners, you know, fleet PVPers, fleet commanders, stealth bombers, everything relies on Intel being as accurate and as up-to-date as possible. Any fleet or anybody really without this information you just die and you all know it you've all seen a fleet come in and nobody's warned you and you've died because of it or you've gone into a fight and you've had the wrong intel and you you've, you've lost half your fleet because there was another fleet you didn't know about or there was a bubble or something like that so accurate up-to-date intel is key to surviving in anything we do in this game and in horde especially we have huge standing fleets in 7rm and gme both share the same channel for intel they obviously have their own separate voice comms, but both share a shared Intel chat channel. And the more accurate Intel we get in there, the better lives are for everybody in both pockets. Which of course leads us to the question, where do we actually have Intel? So even if you're not actively looking for stuff, even if not, you're not reporting Intel, you should be keeping an eye out for information yourself to keep yourself safe to keep other people safe you can warn other people that kind of thing the main place is our horde intel channel in game you've all known it and if you don't have it open at all times you're doing it wrong it's an in-game chat channel which is used exclusively for reporting of enemy ships and fleet movements it should not be used for chatter it's not used to discuss the weather it's not used to discuss fits it is used for intel you should have it open at all times and because everybody uses it, again, we need the information in there to be as short, but as correct as we can get. On top of that, people will be reporting Intel in comms. Of course, if you're in Mumble in a standing fleet or you're in a proper fleet, a lot of Intel will come over comms instead. I would ask that if you are giving Intel over comms in a standing fleet, you make sure you are still giving it to the Horde Intel channel as well, because not everybody is on comms all of the time for whatever reason, and that is fine. Being on comms is not a requirement in standing fleet, it is just recommended. So even if you're reporting comms in Mumble or you're putting Intel in Mumble, please put it in the Horde Intel channel. But it follows the same rules as Horde Intel. If you're providing Intel in voice make it as accurate as short as you can while still providing the necessary information in a fleet this will vary a bit so intel is just as important as a fleet but what will usually happen is the fleet commander will have specific people reporting information to him you know them as scouts we know them as saviors they are very important they do their job well the fleet survives they do it badly the fleet dies but that will usually be on comms, you know, in a private channel with the fleet commander. So a lot of the time, you won't hear about it. But it happens all the time. Intel going back and forth, back and forth. So it's important we get it right. And what better way to show you this? By giving you some examples here. These are all examples I have pulled from the past two weeks in Horde. Either on comms or on Horde Intel. We have three columns. On the left, we have what I would classify as bad intel. In the middle, we have intel we can actually use correctly. And on the right, we have the kind of intel we would expect. So we're going to go through it because I know you all love receiving this kind of information. 
And then we're going to go through what's wrong and what's right and why that's the case so you all know for the future. So if you see the intel, Titan tackled. What does that enable Horde pilots to do? Absolutely nothing is what that allows us. It tells us there's a Titan tackled. That's it. We don't know where. We don't know who. We don't know when. We don't know if there's other ships. We don't know what by. That does nothing for us. It creates panic because people go, there's a Titan. And generally everything falls over. So as Intel goes, that's terrible. Never do it. Next one, Big Fleet and FTAC N. You've all seen this one as well. And if you're looking at that and you're thinking, well, that's Intel that tells them there's a fleet there. My response to you is, how do you quantify the word Big Fleet? Because to somebody like me, a Big Fleet is 100 plus. To the new being that joined two days ago, a Big Fleet is three people. So again, that information does nothing for us at all. We still don't know what they're in. We don't know how many there are. We don't know who they are. Useless intel. Doesn't do anything for us. The next one follows the same thinking. Lots of enemies. Okay, great. Well, you know, how, how many is lost? You know, nobody knows. I don't know. The person who's reporting it probably doesn't know. There's just lots. But unfortunately, again, it, it doesn't help us out a whole lot at all. It's cluttering up the Intel channel where we could have information that is more correct. And odds are, if somebody is seeing lots of enemies, they can also tell how many there are. So why isn't that reported instead? A staple of standing fleet, we've got WWW tackled by lots. This is a type of Intel. He's trying to provide information on what is there. Unfortunately, again, it does nothing for us. You know, how many is lots? Is that five stealth bombers? Is it two dozen gealers? Is it a Scourge Macarial gang? You know, it could be anything. So people warping in, they don't know what they're going into. They don't even know where he is. You know, is that in GME? Is it in 8QM? Is it 7OM? Is it FTACM? You don't know until you initiate warp and see if he's there. You don't know what's there until you land. You might be dead because it was a huge fleet and it wasn't pointed out. Two more in system. You'll see this a lot as well. You've just logged into the game. You've opened the Horde Intel channel wondering what's about. And you see the words, they've gone this system. Or there's two more in, you know, C4C. Or two more what? You've just logged in. You've got half the message. There are two more what in system. Gilas, hunters, stealth bombers. You know, that information is half the picture. There might have been a message just before it. But if I've only just logged in... Well, that does nothing for me. I can't tell anything from that. And to round off the bad intel, gigantic brave fleet in DO6. Again, same rules as before. It doesn't tell us anything about the nature of the fleet. Is it a brave fleet? How many is gigantic? What are they in? What are they doing? Where are they in DO6? Is it their standing fleet? Is it a ratting fleet? Have they got 50 war cores in a colossal belt? Probably not. It's brave, not goon swarm. But, uh, you know... It still doesn't tell us anything about the nature of what's there. Fortunately, it's not all doom and gloom in our Intel channels because there are good examples around. So in the middle column, we have Enzaki and El Taxi and Agama. Brilliant. We've got a pilot. We've got a system. We've got a ship. That's fantastic. We can react appropriately. Agama's not too much to worry about for people on the eye out i should say so we know you know we know where he is we know who it is we know what he's in we don't know what he's doing in the system is he warping is he on a gate but we know a lot more than we did previously and we can react with that information we have values that are quantifiable another example 7om gate in ftaken is camped by 20 plus hostiles with bubbles well Great, we know where they are on the gate. We know they've got bubbles, so we know the gate's dangerous. We know they're in FTAC N. We know roughly how many there are. We don't know what ships. Sure, it's not great intel. This is merely okay. But we know that that system is dangerous. And we can avoid it knowing that if we go in solo, it's probably going to end poorly. And again, underneath that, 7M, 10-man init fleet, entered system, no eyes. So we know an enemy fleet has come in. We know what system they've come into. We know how many there are. We know who it is. 
but we also have confirmed that we don't have eyes on them. So it's not that the guy's not reporting the information. We know he genuinely doesn't see what they're in. So that's all the information he can get us right now. And that's fine. If you can only get so much information, report it anyway. But if you're missing out key information like numbers, location, ship types, then the intel is going to be greatly lacking. And then we've got the best intel we can get. So if everybody in Horde reported intel, like on the right-hand side column here, I'm sure none of you would ever die to bad guys. I'm 100% positive nobody would ever die. Probably. Um, so, obviously, C4C, Tembrae, Sipples jumped in from out taxi and walked GME Great Direction. Great Direction. So, fantastic. We know who they are. We know what they're in. We know where they've come from. We know where they're going. We know they're moving quick. They've gone straight from gate to gate. We know they're in Sipples. They'll be pretty fast. We know it's brave. They're probably hunting. And we know exactly where they are. So, that is intel that is just perfect in every way, essentially. There's only one way it could be better, and we'll explain that in a bit. And then the second best bit of information is Seven Scourge and the Colossal in 7OM with a D-scan link kiting off the warp-in. So again, we know who, we know where, we know what. So there'll be a D-scan link and we'll run through in a minute what that means if you're not sure. So we know what they're in and we know what they're doing there. So we know maybe if we're in a frigate that will die to a kiting ship, let's not go to the Colossal. But we know they're there, so we know we can avoid it. And that's the kind of intel we want to see. So if you find that you're posting the kind of intelligence we see in the left-hand column, don't fix it. There is better information you can report, and you probably know it. You know, you, you just may be typing in a panic, or you can't be bothered putting all the information in. Bother. If you're going to report some intel, report the best intel you can. There is no excuse otherwise. It helps you, and it helps everybody else in the alliance. Bad intel kills people. Simple as that. Uh, there is a couple of questions up, which I can answer now. So off topic, what is kiting? Um, just to clarify there. So kiting is moving away at speed, um, essentially keeping range on whatever it is is being shot. So like an Orthrus or a Gamma, which move very quickly and stay, you know, 50, 60 kilometers away at high speed, that's kiting. They stay well away from you while still engaging you. So they're obviously quite dangerous. They're quick. They stay at range. You might not be able to shoot back because they're quite far pretty dangerous to fight solo a kiting ships scourge in particular used them a lot which is why they were in that particular intel another question should you post your lost mail into intel channels when dying to enemies yes that is fine because that still provides information on what killed you so it provides information on ship types and who they are Follow it up with more information if you can. So where were they in the system? Were they on the gate? Was there a bubble? Was there more than on your kill mail? But posting a kill mail or a lost mail into an intel channel along with other information is a perfect way of relaying information quickly, essentially, in one line. So we've seen some examples, but how do you actually get the information? So before you even think about posting intel, you need to have the intel to start with. And there's three main ways that you do this. You'll all be familiar with them one way or another, I'm sure. But they, are, they all provide different levels of information. So the most common way people get intel is some local. The local chat channel shows everybody in the system. And obviously not what they're in, not where they are, but they're, that they are in system. So the most basic intel you can provide and you should provide is that somebody or a number of people have entered a system. So as an example here, if you get 20 non-horde people suddenly entering a system and you can see that in local, even if you don't see the ships, you don't see what gate, you just know they've come in, report it. 20 plus people have just entered GME pocket or GME system or 7RM or KRY or whatever it might be. If you get more information later, you can go ahead and put it in. You know, you can update your intel. But to start with, just 20 people have entered KOI, no visual, no eyes. I don't see them. I don't know what they're in, but there's 20 dudes here. That is fine intel. You don't need to go out and hunt down the individual ships. You give as much intel as you can, as accurate as you can. If you don't have the full picture, that's fine. Post as much as you can accurately. 
The next level up is the directional scan, descan, as it's often called. Um, those of you who haven't used it before, you'll find it in the bottom of your screen in game. To the left of your capacitor, there's a small scanner symbol. If you click on that, one of the options is descan. Uh, there is also a shortcut, which is Alt D for Delta by default. The descan tool will give you essentially every ship within up to 14.3 AU and a 360 degree angle around your ship. It won't tell you exactly where they are. It won't tell you what distance they are until you start narrowing it down, but it will tell you what's around you. The only things it cannot see are cloaked ships and recon ships do not show on descan either, but everything else does. So using descan is another great way to collect information on what ships are around. And we use this a lot. So as a tool I'll go through in a minute, there's another slide in a moment, where you can copy and paste your descan results in for you, and it will calculate the ships it sees. And you can link that to other people. That's a descan link. So when people say, can I get a descan link? This is what they're referring to. And again, we're going to go over that in a bit more detail. But that's the next step up from seeing them in local. You've got them on Dscan, which gives you a rough idea of the ships. The best kind of information is obviously eyes on them. You see them. You see their fleet on grid with you. They're in the overview. They're in space. You can see exactly what they're doing, what ships they've got, what they're doing on the grid. Are they aligning? Are they orbiting? Are they putting bubbles down? You can report precisely what they're up to. And that is the best amount of intel you can possibly provide. Again, like I said earlier, do not worry too much at all if you cannot get that information. But if you can, it gives you the best information you can then pass through to other people. So if you've got eyes on target, you should, in Horde Intel, then be able to relay who it is, exactly what they've got, and exactly what they're doing, and exactly where they are now. Because you can see it. It is right there. When gathering intel in Horde space, as I said there, you gather on everything you can. Anything that's not Horde or Horde allied, which like, you know, Spaceship Samurai and Honor, report it. If it's one dude, if it's a hundred, report it anyway, as accurately as possible. Doesn't matter if somebody else reported it two systems ago when the guy was moving around, report it anyway. Keep that intel up to date. Now, there are two tools that will help you with this because, you know, maybe you don't really have the time to count through your D-scan list. You know, maybe it's got 100 ships on it. You're not going to count 100 ships on D-scan because by the time you're done, they're going to be four systems away. Same with local. If you see, you know, your local go up by 100 people, are you going to go through and count each individual one to make sure they're all the same dudes? No, of course you're not. There's tools for that. And PL, Pandemic Legion actually have tools built into our website, our forums, exactly for this purpose. So there's one for directional scan, and there's one for your local pilot D-scan. And what you can actually do is in the game, you have the ability to select all from your D-scan window using Control A and copy it. And you can then paste that information into the tool, and it will generate a list of what ships it sees or what pilots it sees in the case of the local scan one and it will give you a link a unique link that if you share will take somebody to the same page with the information so a descan link would be simply a case of opening your descan hitting the scan button realizing the enemy fleet is in range copy paste into the website generate a link put that in the horde intel channel this fleet in koi moving to 70m gate done easy you don't have to count the ships or anything like that. It is right there for everybody else to click on. Same with the local scan. If you can't get the enemy fleet on D-scan, if you can't get them on grid, if you can't see them, a local scan works as well because it tells people exactly how many pilots of a particular alliance are in local. And if you haven't got those bookmarks, I suggest doing it. There is a question on why you shouldn't use a third-party D-scan tool. Well, there's a number of reasons. Uh, the first one is you, you can if you actually want to. You know, there's nothing stopping you from using another D-Scan tool. However, because the D-Scan tool is not run by PL, there is a risk. And for the life of me, I don't know how true this information is. It could just be a rumor that's been going around for years. Probably is. But 
these scan tools that are not o operated by us, by PL and Horde, people could data mine. You know, whoever owns the website is getting that information. So they could tell, oh, somebody's seen our fleet, perhaps, if it's their fleet. Now, I personally have never seen this happen. But it's something to bear in mind. You can use a third-party D-Scan tool, but I wouldn't recommend it. We have a good tool already. You may as well use it. We know it works. We know it's accurate. We know you can share it quickly and easily. You might as well use ours. Uh, is there a way to copy paste info of ships on grid like with D-Scan? There is not. No, you cannot copy paste from your overview. What you would have to do then is if you open your D-Scan, you can adjust the range of it up to 14.3 AU. So you can adjust your D-Scan down to say 200 kilometers or 1000 kilometers, hit the scan button and obviously it'll give you everything on grid with you because it's everything within 2000 kilometers and then you can paste that as you normally would a D-Scan. So yes, you can't do it from the overview, but you can do it with the tool by playing around a little bit with the range. So let's assume now you've got the intel. You've figured out what there is. Uh, you've obviously had a look. You've got a descan link perhaps, or you've seen a fleet moving through. What do you do then? Obviously you report it. You report it in Horde Intel, you report it on comms, whatever it might be. But, of course, what do you report? Now, from the examples we gave earlier, you've probably already got some idea here of the kind of information you want to put forward. But you can break it down into these main points I put here. So, what are you reporting? What have you seen? Ships, numbers. So, obviously, example, 30 Hurricanes, 10 Ospreys. A dozen light tackle or so or maybe it's 10 confessors or two stealth bombers or whatever it might be so what have you seen and then where is it what system is it in koi is it in 7rm where in the system are they on a gate are they at a planet are they at a station a citadel where are they within the system and then of course who are they is it test is it rote capel is it Scourge? Is it Goonswarm? Is it Darkness, perhaps? All of these alliances play to particular strengths. Like we've, you know, we know Rote Capel hot drops. So if you see Rote Capel in local, they're probably going to be hot dropping. If you see uh, Brave about, it's probably going to be a mix of random cruisers and so on. It tends to be what they roam in and so on. So if you can identify who it is, as in the nature of the corporation or the alliance that the pirates belong to, report that as well, because it gives us a bit of an idea about what they can do. So we know Brave, for example, isn't going to be dropping super capitals on us anytime soon. But of course, somebody like Darkness, they've got super capitals, they might. So knowing that it's Darkness instead of Brave could save, you know, a capital ship somewhere down the line. So please report that as well. And if you have eyes on grid, what are they doing? What is the status of the enemy fleet? Are they warping from gate to gate? Are they orbiting a gate? Are they camping a gate? Are they kiting away from a gate towards the sun by caught driving away from the gate? What are they doing? If you can see them, report that as well. Because if you can report that the enemy fleet is warping from gate A to gate B, then we know they're probably going to be in the system next to gate B in a moment. So... And then, of course, if you have a D-scan or local link, put that in the message as well. So if you manage to grab one, put it in the same message. So what, where, who, what are they doing, and any additional information you can provide. That is the perfect intel. If you do that every time, everybody in Horde that watches the channel, which you all should be doing, knows exactly what it's about and can react appropriately. Easy job. Everybody wins. And that's all it is. Gathering and reporting intel is super basic. There's really not much to it. And it's all common sense when you just think about it. What, you know, what are they in? Where are they? It's so easy to figure out and so easy to pass on the information. And yet, of course, people don't do it. Or we wouldn't necessarily be having this class. So if you can yourselves do this correctly, then everybody else will be able to follow suit because they'll see everybody else doing it. But if you get people posting bad intel all the time, 
big fleet in 7RM, huge fleet jumping into system, spike in KOI, doesn't tell us anything. So if the more people do that, the more people assume it's okay. Don't, because it's not. You've all been on the bad end of that kind of intel. Don't do it. Just take the extra five seconds to, you know, type a little bit extra information, an extra word or two, and post it in Horde Intel or on comms or wherever, wherever it is. That's all I ask of you. And then that way, if somebody dies from the enemy fleet, it's not the intel's fault. It's because they weren't paying attention. Nobody likes dying to bad intel, but if you die with good intel, it's on that person. Sounds harsh, but there it is. So before we get into the, few, the, the full Q&A, we'll just go over some general good practice points to remember. So one I mentioned earlier on is that not everybody has access to all the messages in a channel. So if I've just looked into the game, I don't see the past 20 messages in Horde Intel. So if you're posting fragments of Intel as you go, people logging in are not going to have the full picture. So make sure that each piece of information you provide is together collectively as correct as you can get. It doesn't matter if you're repeating information. If you have more information to add, I'd rather you post the full message with the extra information on top than post fragments one at a time. If you're not sure on Intel, say as much. So if you think you saw 10 frigates and there's 10 people in local, but you're not 100% sure they're in frigates, say so. Don't then go, there's 10 frigates in this system. Say, there's 10 people in this system, I think they're in frigates, or possibly in frigates, or no visual, even just say you don't know what they're in. Because if you go off a hunch, and you say 100% it is this, and you were wrong, you've just posted completely wrong information, and somebody's probably going to lose their ship, and it's your fault. So post the information, but be clear that you're not 100% on it. If you're providing intel on comms, in a standing fleet or in a main fleet or whatever it might be and people are talking away as they are often to do in standing fleet and the intel you're trying to provide is important you have the check check tool at your command saying the words check check basically indicates everybody else in this channel should shut the hell up immediately i've got something important i need to relay and that gets the for the rest of you if you hear the words check check you shut up nobody wants to hear what you had for lunch you be quiet immediately, you let that person relay the information. It goes without saying that if you abuse that, do not be surprised if you find yourself muted on Mumble by a director or possibly kicked if you abuse it heavily. Check Check is designed to provide information. You're, it's designed to get everybody to be quiet so you can relay something at short notice. An example would be, for example, a uh, hot drop in a system or 10 interceptors just jumped in from KOY to 7 m because interceptors move quick. So it's important you get the information on comms while you're still typing it into a Horde Intel. And that's the kind of scenario you'd use check check for. If you're following an enemy fleet and providing intel on them, so if you're tracking a brave fleet moving towards 7RM, keep people updated at regular points. So they're now jumping this system, they're jumping this system. Don't just report one system and then keep following them without reporting them when they're going, because otherwise what's the point in you following them? absolutely nothing so report intel as often as you can if you're following a fleet or if you're tracking a fleet and finally last thing i've got to say before we get into q a be as concise as you can so take the information you've got and strip it down to the key points who what where what are they doing you don't need a paragraph to report intel you can put it all in a sentence the key information can be in one sentence. Don't write a novel trying to report intel. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to basic intel gathering and reporting. It's dead simple. So there's a few questions backed up. I'll start working through them. If you have any questions that you feel still need answering, feel free to put them in and I'll answer them as quickly as possible. Uh, so if we have one or two neutrals that keep jumping back and forth between systems, yes, keep reporting it. Absolutely, keep reporting it. If you have a bomber that keeps jumping back and forth between 8QM and GME, and he's not been killed for whatever reason, yes, keep reporting it by all means. Because if, you know, if you're in GME and you're not looking at local, but you are looking at Horde Intel, 
for whatever reason. Maybe l locals got you know a hundred people in it, so you're not easily keeping track. And that person jumps back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then he's not reported jumping back and forth. You might miss him. Somebody might miss him. So if you notice it, report it. The Horde Intel channel is for Intel. Nothing else is going to be happening in there but information. So yes, do put it in. Uh, how do you copy the dscan link back into the game? So when you use the website, when you use the dscan tool, and you put the information in, so you p you paste your dscan into the into the website, and you click submit, it takes you to a new website. Basically, it takes you to a unique URL with the information from your dscan all laid out, how many cruises, what type, and so on. That's just a link. It's a website address. So you just copy it from your URL bar in your web browser and put it into the Intel channel as a link. That's it. Somebody clicks that link, takes them to the website, the direct link for your dscan that you took, they can see the information. It's just a link. That's all it is. Are uh, screen shares more useful for FCEs? Generally, no. So if you're just reporting fleet as a scout, no. Audio Intel is usually enough with the occasional dscan link, maybe, to put into fleet chat. The only time you'll generally find information like a screenshot being shared is if you need information on positioning, like a POS. So you can see what modules are where around the POS, stuff like that. So it's very rare you'll be using screen sharing. I personally, I've never used screen sharing as an FC or used a screenshot. I've just used dscan tools and audio intel. That's really all you need. So if you want to scout and provide it now to people, don't worry, you don't have to share your screen. That'd be really weird. Uh, EFF9 has put a good point here, so I'll put that up anyway for you all. Um, Intel, yes, use the Intel channel for it. So I obviously mentioned if you're in a standing fleet, you'll hear a lot of Intel on comms, on voice, like we're doing now. Don't put Intel into the fleet chat. What's the point? Because if the fleet reforms, or if people join and leave the fleet, or they disconnect and reconnect, they're not going to see it. Put it all in Horde Intel. It's literally what the channel is for. Fleet chat is not a place for intel and a standing fleet. There's a chance for Ws. It's a place for basic information about maybe what's tackling you. But intel should go in the Horde intel chat. It's literally its purpose. So yes, please put it all in Horde intel, not the fleet chat. You can put it in fleet chat later, but don't put it in the fleet chat at the expense of Horde intel. It's that simple. Uh, last question for the moment. How does Horde handle recon and exploration of neighboring space? So, um, I'm guessing you mean in terms of like hunting or so on, Sophie? Um, you can answer on comms if you want to, if you're not muted, which I think you are. Uh, yeah, it's more like about um, where the DME buses are, what the timers are, what uh, wormholes we have around this, all of that stuff. Right, I see, I see. So, Horde has a dedicated recon team. They're awesome guys. You've all interacted with them one way or another over your time in Horde, I imagine. Uh, we have a recon team who are specialized in doing stuff like this, looking for passes, wormholes, and so on. There is a specialized unit within Horde. At the moment, I don't think they're actually recruiting because you know it, you can only have so many people before it gets unwieldy. There is a farm thread, though, on our farms about Horde recon. Um, so if you ever see them open and you're interested in this kind of thing, I would join them. We obviously have recon channels and so on. Very important tasks to hold recon, guys. Um, which what that basically means is in terms of general horde, there isn't really a lot of call for people going out and finding stuff. That does not mean you don't, you can't do it. So if you want to go out and find content, like if you find a wormhole and you think there's something fun to do through there, you can go ahead and poke other people. You know, hey guys, I found this here. You know, you can convo me. You know, I'm an FC. I'll, if there's something fun, I'll put a fleet together and I'll go for it. But you can form a fleet yourself, post an op, and, and go do stuff. And if you're not sure, and there's something big you want to tackle, like maybe there's a POS, or, you know, you found a Goon Titan or something, you know, and you think it might be killable, something like that, poke an FC, poke a director, that kind of thing. Um, but in terms of just general exploration through neighboring space for Intel purposes, it's there's not really a call for it in, in Horde itself at the moment. If we need it, we need we have a recon team for it. 
Generally, Horde Intel, the Horde Intel channel is designed for Horde space. So not the regions next door, not for tribute, um, you know, not for high sec and Jita. It's designed for Horde space, you know, pure blind and fade. So another point, there's an expectation that members be on voice comms and Intel's only report in voice comms. Is this practice bad? Yes, it's absolutely terrible. So I highly recommend that people are on comms at all times. In standing fleets and normal fleets, it is something that I would recommend people do. But particularly in standing fleets, this is not something that is always possible for people, for whatever reason. They might be coordinating other things. They might be unable to get on comms at the moment and doing other things. And they're just ratting in the off time. There is scenarios which you cannot be in comms, and that is fine. There is no hard set requirement to be on comms in a standing fleet. There is in normal fleets. If you're on, on an op and you're not on comms, you're actively hurting people in the fleet. That's different. In a standing fleet, there is no requirement to do so. So, while you may report intel on, you know, in voice quickly, which is fine, that's what voice is there for, it expedites the transfer of information, that's what voice comms are for, the information should still be relayed to the Horde Intel channel. There are people not in fleet, there are people not on comms. If they die after that point, because they weren't watching Intel, that is then their fault. You know, they weren't, they weren't on comms, they weren't in fleet, and they weren't in Intel. You know, if they don't do any of those three things, nothing's going to save them. But just reporting information on comms and then not putting it on Horde Intel, and then getting mad at people when they die because the information was not there, that is not okay. And if people start, like, if you notice people doing that, and people essentially bullying and shaming other Horde members into being on comms when, for whatever reason, there might be a, a, a perfectly legitimate reason they are not, that is not okay. Contact a, a, a director, contact somebody you know who can get that stuff in line. Because it's not a requirement. I'd recommend it. Like I said, you'd be silly not to do it, but there are reasons you might not be on comms and that's okay. So please put all intel in the Horde intel channel, even if it's been relayed elsewhere. Right. Are there any more questions, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? Anything you feel that I've not covered, anything you're not sure on, now is the time to ask. There are no stupid questions, especially in Horde. There are no stupid questions. There is only an unwillingness to learn that is frowned upon. As long as you learn, you ask the questions, nobody will begrudge you. In that case, then, I think we may be done. I told you it would be a nice short class compared to some of the other ones I've run. That was barely 45 minutes. The last one I ran was an hour and a half. So I hope you all found it at least a little bit in informative, a little bit useful. I expect to see nothing but 100% quality intel from here on out from the lot of you, or I'll start calling you out because I know you are all here. So thank you all very much for joining. Uh, this will be recorded and put onto the Horde YouTube by Cal when he gets a moment. The slides involved as well, because obviously there's a couple of links on them. The slides from this class are always available on Horde Square here. There's an all classes section on the left hand side. You go into there at any point and you can go through and see all of the classes that people have put on Flight School and all of the slides. You can always come back to this for more information. And if there is anything you're unsure on or any questions you think of at a later date, please send me an email, TGL3, or PM me on the forums, or send me a convo in game if I'm not busy and running a fleet. Please let me know. I am happy to answer any questions, even if it's not about Intel. It could be anything else you thought of. Ask away. We obviously have our new Beans guys as well, our NBI dudes. They're around pretty much 24-7. If you have any questions, ask away. As long as you ask, Nobody can judge you for it. <laughs>